All right, welcome to this month's virtual meetup. Thank you so much. Uh, if you don't know him yet, I want to introduce you to Elton Stoneman. He is a Docker captain and um, I've worked with him for a very long time because he worked at Docker as well prior to now teaching Docker um, and Istio, right, to a number of folks through his uh, books, recorded classes. What else? Uh, yeah, that's probably about it. Yeah, books and uh, uh, plural site courses and, um, uh, you know, you'll see me at meetups and conferences and stuff doing, doing the same sort of thing. <laughs> awesome. All right. So let's, I'll hand it over and uh, go ahead and put myself on mute. Thank you, Elton. Okay, cool. So let me fire up my slides here. Uh, I'm going to share this screen. So let's bring that up there. So I've got millions of things open and I'm going to only share part of it, obviously, because I don't want you to see all my emails. <laughs> okay, cool. So slides here. And share screen then. Okay, so I've got a few slides I'm going to go through. Uh, there's a whole bunch of demos, but really it's a kind of informal thing. So, so any questions you've got, you know, you can just shoot them in the, in the chat window. Um, and we'll, we'll kind of go through that stuff and, and hopefully answer any questions you've got about this. I wrote a blog post uh, for, for the Docker blog, which is which covers some of the kind of basics of Istio. I'm going to go through that and show you how it all kind of works, uh, but with a with a kind of broader introduction for people who are not familiar with um, what the Istio stuff looks like. So, so Istio is a service mesh, and the idea of a service mesh is that it takes the, the communication between your application components and it makes it into its own separate entity. So imagine I've got a distributed application uh, with, with lots of different pieces that are all talking to each other. Um, they all need the same sort of concerns to deal with their communication, and you can, you can bring all those things into one place, in, into, a, into, into your service mesh. So the idea is, uh, I'm not going to go through all my slides, but I'll go through some of them. So, uh, and the important thing there is, it's about distributed applications. It's not necessarily about microservices or Docker or Kubernetes. You, you can do this stuff, the principle of a service mesh, you can do it without containers, um, but the containerized world makes everything much, much easier. So we'll see in the demos that, uh, that when, you're, when you're applying a service mesh and you're already in the world of Docker and Kubernetes, um, it's super simple to layer that stuff on top. But the simplest idea is if I've got um, distributed system, like the most basic system you can imagine, a website that talks to a database, like in order to make that communication happen, the, the, the client, the web application, needs to know a, a whole bunch of stuff. It needs to be addressed where it finds the database, it needs to know if it's going to, when it tries to connect, how long should it wait to time out in case there's a connection issue, uh, when it's got an established connection, if there's a problem, should it retry the command, how often should it retry, how long should it wait between retries, should it encrypt the communication, that whole bunch of, of what are effectively infrastructure level networking concerns that live inside the web application in some sort of client library for the database. And that's fine because, you know, I'm, I'm talking between two components. But as soon as I add another component there, so my web app now is consuming from a, from a REST API, what happens here is I need all the same stuff. So I need to know the address of the API. I need to know how long to wait before I time out. If, I, if there's a problem connecting, do I retry? Am I going to encrypt the connection? All that sort of stuff. So it's the same set of concerns. But it'll be a completely different way of, of dealing with them because this will be an HTTP client library, uh, and whereas the database would be some sort of binary protocol that's in that's in your database client. There's no way to kind of centrally manage this stuff, and you end up and, and the more the more components you have, the worse this gets. So uh, even with just a handful of things, I, I'm having to if I want to change my configuration from one environment to the next to say. Um, you know, for, for some reason we're having latency issues in dev, so we need, uh, or in, in, our, in one of our test or production environments, we need to increase the timeout across the board to deal with some sort of network issue that we've got. I can't do that. I've got to go into each of these components and adjust the configuration, and it's different everywhere because they've all got different ways of configuring things. So, you know, it just falls. And when you've actually got a microservices application, and this, this example is from GitHub, um, then it just gets much, much worse because I've got all these components here. They all have their own databases. They're all talking to each other in one way or another. There's a message queue in there. Um, there's a whole bunch of things. Each of those each of those components has those concerns, and it's trying to deal with, with those things in its own way. And there's no centralized way for me to, to look at these things. So what a service mesh does 
is it, uh, it, it lets you centralize that. So with a service mesh, I take my distributed application, uh, I can be running that on, the, you know, I could just be running those, each of those could be a separate virtual machine, or they could be, you know, ideally in the demos I'll be showing you, they're gonna be in, in a Kubernetes cluster, so there'll be containers running inside Kubernetes. And then I deploy my service mesh inside my platform, and they're, they're kind of separate things. So they don't, they don't work with each other unless you explicitly kind of bring your components into the service mesh. And when you register your component with the service mesh, what it does is it injects a network proxy into, into that component. So when my web application now is making a call to the database or making a call to the API, it still thinks it's going directly across the network, but it isn't. It's the, the proxy that's been injected by the service mesh that takes control of all the traffic. And because the proxy owns the traffic, it can do all sorts of interesting stuff. So uh, for, for, to start with, we can take all those concerns that used to live inside the clients and um, it can, they all now live inside the service mesh. So, so what you end up doing is your, your, your application components get simpler and simpler because you're not, you're not writing code or configuration to deal with networking concerns. So things like retries and timeouts, the service mesh will, will do all that stuff for you. So you don't need to worry about having that in your client code. Um, and if you own both sides of the conversation, then you can you can register the the service side and the client side with the service mesh, and then you get uh, you can do like encryption. Uh, and if you go from the outside world in, uh, you can run that through the service mesh too. So all all sorts of things that the service mesh can do, like uh, like rate limiting, like automatic retries for you. Uh, you can apply that at all the levels of your of your application, and you manage it all separately. So if I need to make that change to up the timeout across the board, I do that in the service mesh. I don't need to worry about going into each of my components. Okay, so. Uh, that's the kind of rough overview of what this stuff looks like. Uh, so in, in uh, the, the, the example I'm going to show you is with Istio. So there are other service meshes. Let's skip forward I've got a few slides here. Uh, da, 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 da. All these slides are part of my Pluralsight course. So if you're particularly interested, you can see how this stuff works. Uh, I can get you a, a code to watch my Pluralsight courses. Um, so Istio, the way to digging down into how Istio actually does it. So that's the kind of high level of the service mesh. The way Istio works is I've got my two components, my service A, service B. They think they're talking to each other directly, but actually what happens is, and then I've got my, my service mesh sitting in the background. So these bits at the bottom here, these are all the parts of Istio. So Istio runs as containers. You deploy it with a, with a Kubernetes manifest. So it runs inside your platform alongside everything else. But when you register your components with the service mesh, that's when it injects the proxy. So my service A still thinks it's talking directly to service B, but it isn't. It's going through the proxy, and the proxy is where all the rules get configured by, by service mesh. So, so with Istio, I can, I'm, I'm setting up all the configuration for how these things actually talk to each other. So service A might be talking to service B, plain HTTP for a, for a REST call, but when it goes through the proxy, the proxy is upgrading that to a, a mutual TLS encrypted uh, an authorized uh, call that goes that goes through the service mesh. Okay, so uh, there's there's one thing about this. So if you might go back to the slide a second, if you think about the stuff that you care about in this diagram, the stuff you care about are the two tiny boxes at the top, service A and service B. And then there's this whole ton of stuff happening behind the scenes. This, this is like an iceberg diagram with millions and millions of lines of code happening to make the network communication happen, to make the, the Kubernetes control plane. Everything that's, that your application platform is, is giving you uh, all becomes part of, a, part of a thing, something you have to manage and own for yourself. So even though the service mesh gives you a huge amount of functionality, and I'll show you some of the kind of core features uh, in today's session, it's not free. Uh, partly because like there's a big learning curve for this stuff. So if you're familiar with Docker, then you know the learning curve to Kubernetes is pretty steep anyway, and you need to be fairly confident with Kubernetes before you can move on to Istio. Everything you do with Istio, you're, you're just defining it in, in application manifests and deploying it with Kubernetes uh, with kubectl, but it's uh, you need to have a good understanding of networking in Kubernetes to take advantage of everything you can do with Istio. And when you're running this, there's also a cost. So there's the kind of ongoing development cost of having to, to deal with the fact that you know the team needs to be skilled up on, on a, a new a new technology and a new architecture. But also when you run this stuff uh, because of because of all the work that can happen in here. So these components that are that are intercepting every single network call, they might be applied authorization rules there might be uh, they, you know they add the encryption and um, there's all sorts of stuff that can be happening with every single network call so there's compute power needed to make that happen so uh, this quote here from uh, from uh, the, the guys at Shopify they if you go and read that blog post like they found out that in order to deploy this stuff in production um, it's gonna cost they it's gonna add like something like 10% to their compute requirements just to deal with all the all the compute requirements of Istio itself okay so having gone through that 
Uh, what I've got here is I'm running Docker Desktop, so just Docker Desktop for Windows, because uh, I'm running a Windows machine. I'm in Linux container mode. I've got Kubernetes enabled. So if you're not familiar with this, like Kubernetes cluster built into Docker Desktop, it's super simple to use. Um, it's got this lovely button, reset Kubernetes cluster, which just takes it straight back to, to a, a, an empty state. So it's super, super nice when you're doing demos. Uh, you can turn it on and off with this button. For Istio, uh, you will need to up the amount of compute power that you're, you're giving your Kubernetes cluster. So again, if you're not familiar with it, the resources panel, um, you can increase the amount of CPUs and memory for the, for the virtual machine that's running, that Docker's running for your containers. You need at least a uh, couple of CPUs and at least six gig of RAM because all the Istio components together with all the Kubernetes components and the demo applications uh, end up using quite a bit of stuff. So you need to up that up, uh, up, up those up. But that's that's really it for the, for the prerequisites. So if I close this down. Uh, this demo repo is all up on GitHub, and I'll, uh, I'll put, the, put the links up at the end. Uh, so what I've got here is there, there are different ways to deploy Istio. Um, the, the way you would do it for kind of any realistic environment is by downloading the Istio command line. There's a command line called Istio Cuttle, and you can use that to deploy uh, the service mesh inside your cluster. But for, for the sake of the demo, I want to show you how it actually works. So I've, I've captured the, the YAML files for deploying Istio, and I'll show you what those look like. So I've just got my, uh, let's do this, kubectl get all. So uh, all I've got running is the, the Kubernetes API. There's nothing, I've got no applications of myself. Uh, I'm not running anything in uh, any other namespaces. So I've got no namespaces in there, just the standard system ones. Okay, so there's nothing running yet. So the first thing I'm going to do is deploy Istio. So uh, let's go and find this here, open terminal. So the first thing uh, Istio does is it adds a whole bunch of new type of resources to your Kubernetes cluster. So you can define things like authorization rules and authentication policies. So they, they live as custom resources in your Kubernetes cluster. Um, and, and to deploy those, the first thing you deploy is this CRDs YAML file, which is just a whole bunch of definitions of uh, these custom resources that you then use to configure how your application components talk to each other. So the first thing I'll do is I'll deploy that, kubectl apply, uh, and ordinarily you wouldn't do this step by step, but you, I want to show you exactly kind of what, what's happening under the scenes when you're deploying this stuff. So it's going to create all these custom resource definitions, and then they're going to, they're going to live inside the cluster, and Istio is going to manage them for me. So the next thing I'll do is deploy Istio itself. So I'm going to do kubectl apply. Usually I've got these written out in a file and I just copy and paste, but uh, I thought I'd be a bit more um, loose today. Okay, so this is gonna deploy all the Istio components. So all the bits that I showed you in the diagram, uh, that Citadel and Mixer, they all do slightly different things. So, so Istio itself is a distributed application that runs across multiple containers. Um, this is a demo configuration of Istio. So it also includes a whole bunch of other stuff like uh, Prometheus for monitoring and Grafana and a service dashboard and a whole bunch of other stuff, which is uh, which we'll, we'll, we'll see in, in some of the demos. So uh, let's go and get my uh, cheat sheet up here. Okay, cool. So now I've got uh, all that deployed. Uh, I, I still haven't deployed my application. So I, all the Kubernetes, all the Istio stuff lives in its own namespace. So if I do a kubectl get all, I've still got nothing there. But if I go and look at the Istio system namespace, then I will see there's all this stuff that's been deployed by Istio. When you first run this command yourself uh, in a fresh cluster, it'll download all the all the images for the ingress uh, ingress gateway. Um, it'll download all that stuff from Docker Hub. And eventually it'll all be up and running. So you'll see a few of these are still are still uh, starting up. So uh, my the, there's there are various jobs that get run as part of the deployment. Some of these are still starting. The main ones are my the sidecar injector, which is the thing that creates the proxy. Uh, I've got pilot in here. I've got I've got Citadel, which creates certificates. All all the main stuff are already up and running. So I should be good here. Um, but the thing, the first thing to point out is, even though I've got none of my application containers running at all, so I'm not running any of my own software. Uh, if I look at Docker info here, this will tell me that I've got 54 containers, 45 of them are running. So just by running the platform, there's a whole bunch of compute requirements. So this is what I kind of mentioned about um, you know, your service mesh is not necessarily free because it has a whole bunch of things that you need to provide it, like in terms of compute power. Uh, so just to run Kubernetes, all the Kubernetes components running containers, all the Istio components running containers. I've got a whole bunch of stuff that's running, uh, even though I'm not actually deployed any of my applications yet. Okay, so the demo app I'm going to deploy is the standard kind of Istio demo app. It's called uh, Book Info. Um, if you go to Istio, is all open source. It's all on GitHub. You can go to Istio slash Istio and see what they're doing up there. But they also have this demo application. 
Uh, the source code for that is up on their GitHub, but I'm using it in a slightly different way for my demos. I, you can go and follow some examples on their website, but I, I prefer my own kind of workflow of introducing this stuff. So this this repo is the one that I'm using. That's got the I'm using their app, but I'm using it in a slightly different way. So I'm going to deploy uh, a namespace for an uh, update to my namespace. So kubectl. This is why I usually just do a copy and paste. kubectl apply dash f. Zero, 03. Okay, so this namespace, what I'm doing is changing the default namespace and adding this label. So, so the things that are running in the background now, all my Istio components that are running in the background, they're connecting to the Kubernetes API and they're waiting for new services to be created. And when a new service gets created, it looks for this, this label. So if the, if, the, uh, if the service gets created in a namespace that has this Istio injection enabled, Istio will automatically register it with the service mesh. So in the slides where I said when you, when you when you run your application in your cluster, you've got your service mesh in your cluster, your apps aren't automatically part of the service mesh. You can you have to manually add them to it, or you can you can you can say for everything in this namespace, when when things get created, then add them to the service mesh. So that's what this is doing, configuring the default namespace. So anything I deploy is gonna be registered with the service mesh straight away. Okay, and then my actual application here. Uh, I'll show you these YAML files in a second. So it's, it's a really kind of basic application. So my book info, uh, it's just a website that shows you information about a book. There's just one book in there, so it's not particularly useful. Um, the, the, the entry point to the application is being controlled by Istio. So you don't have to do that. You can use ordinary, ordinary Kubernetes uh, service to, re to receive um, external traffic into your application, or you can use an ingress component standard, Kubernetes ingress. But if you want to be able to apply network policies from external traffic going in, then then, then it needs to come into Istio first. So that's what this is doing. This is just kind of like um, this is kind of like a Kubernetes service that's listening on uh, on a particular port. So it's listening on port 80 for any host. So any any host that, any requests that come into my cluster, um, Istio is going to pick them up, and then Istio will decide what to do with them. Okay, and then my application itself doesn't have any Istio -y things. So this is a standard kind of Kubernetes deployment for each of my components. I've got a service. Uh, which is just which is not um, a public service. These are all internal components because Istio is managing the external stuff. I've got my service. I've got my service account. So everything is deployed with its own service account, so I can do author authorization within Istio. Uh, and then I've got my standard deployment. So I've got my Kubernetes. Hello. <laughs> uh, I've got my Kubernetes deployment, which is just this is the name of my container that's coming from Docker Hub, uh, and this is this is how we're going to run these things together. So there's nothing Istio at the moment. I've deployed my application. It's going to be running in the service mesh because it's been automatically configured. So everything will have a proxy, um, but I'm not doing anything with Istio yet to manage the traffic. So now if I do a cube cuttle get all, we'll see. I've got my uh, I've got my sections here. So here are the pods that I'm interested in. So this is my application now. So now I am running some of my own containers. What you'll see is I've got my, my product page, which is the entry point that we'll see in a second. And then all the different parts of the page are, are provided by separate services. So the product page calls the other services. You'll see that they're, they're all ready and there are two containers in each of these pods. So this is why uh, Istio does work outside of Kubernetes. You can, you can, you can um, run it on straight VMs if you want to. But with, with Kubernetes, it integrates really nicely with the platform for things like um, automatically injecting the proxy. So when a new pod gets started up, um, my, my pod here is, is running my, my details application, my application that I care about, plus the network proxy, which Istio is managing for me. So because I've got the proxy in there, that's why I see there are two containers in each of these pods, and Istio is going to manage all that stuff for me. Because they live in the same pod, they share the same network space. So when my details application is making a networking call, it's going to go through the proxy, and the proxy will apply the rules. Okay, so this is all up and running, so it should just work nicely. Uh, if I browse to, uh, let's get my link here. Click on my browser. <laughs> Firefox is installing my updates and we'll start in a few moments. So we'll just take a few moments. Here we go. Yeah, I'm running. Uh, it must be almost a day since I use Firefox. There must be a new update available. Okay, so this is coming into my, this is coming to my cluster. Uh, that, that's all worked. So that's good. So this is the application. It's really basic. Uh, it's th this is a th this is a Python page. I think uh, each of these components runs in different things. So the the book reviews that you see here that that's being provided by one service. The details come from another service, and then all the communication is currently going through Istio, but it's not doing anything with them at the moment. Okay, so it's uh, I haven't configured any rules. I, I'm not doing anything interesting with it. I'm just running these things through Istio. So um, the, 
at this point in the demo, I've just got my uh, standard Kubernetes deployment. So if I first want to start deploying this stuff, um, I don't need to, to, to go and learn all of Istio. Uh, I can just deploy it with Istio and then gradually start bringing in the features that I care about. So the first one I'm going to show you is uh, doing a Canary deployment. So uh, switch to my other slides here. So with Istio, because all the traffic is going through, uh, going through the proxies, um, I can configure where that traffic actually goes. So my entry point for my application, I've got this, this, uh, this gateway component, which is running in Istio. So external traffic from the outside world comes into Istio, and then uh, it gets sent onto this product page component using standard DNS lookups, uh, everything's done by the, by, the, by the name of the service in Kubernetes. So it'll look for a service called product page. Uh, and at the moment, I'm, everything's going to my, my V1 product page, which is all I have. If I want to do a, a, a canary deployment, so I can spin up a new version of my application and have both versions running and just send a subset of traffic to the new deployment so I can, I can check that everything's working correctly, I can do that with Istio because it's receiving all the incoming traffic and sending it on to my product page. So I can configure some rules to say when traffic comes in from the outside world and it's looking for the product page, send 70% of it to my V1 component, that is the stable component, and send 30% to my V2. We'll do a canary deployment. We can, we can monitor all our metrics, make sure everything's working correctly. And as we're happy with it, we can gradually change the, the ratio of those deployments and send more and more traffic to V2 and eventually get rid of V1. And the way Istio does that is, um, let's go back here, is it adds all these extra bits and pieces. So the gateway at the top there is the bit that I talked about that, um, that is receiving the external traffic from the outside world. Istio also adds these, these two other components, the virtual service and the destination rule. And between, between those two, you can, you're configuring where traffic is actually going to go. So when my service A calls service B, actually it goes through Istio and I might have a virtual service and some destination rules in there set up to send it to service C instead. So those are the things you define in, again, Kubernetes, YAML manifests, um, custom objects, but they're, they're fairly clear to look at. And so what happens is uh, you're, you're layering these, these abstractions on top of your deployment. So at the bottom there, I've got my container that's running Docker. Uh, that's part of a pod that's also running my network proxy. And then on top of that, I'm layering my, my, um, my Istio definitions that it can control the traffic. So let's show you what they look like. Oh, I've got cold, so you'll hear me sniffling, I'm afraid. Uh, so my canary deployment here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy a new version of my application. So my product page v2, uh, it's it, it's still going to use the same uh, the same application label. So the product page v1 and v2 both have the same uh, application label. They've got different version labels. Uh, it's using the same service account. It's using a new version of my application image. Uh, and down here, and that's again, that's a standard Kubernetes deployment. So when I deploy first that bit, it's going to it's going to spin up one replica of the new version of my application, and no traffic will get there until I configure Istio to do something with that. So what I've got here is I've got this destination rule, and the destination rule um, apply it, it defines that how how the traffic can potentially be split. So in this case, I'm saying uh, I've got I've got two subsets. The V1 subset of, of imagine that I've got uh, I've got 100 pods and some of them are running V1 and some of them are running V2 and I'm telling Istio how to identify those. So what it's saying is the label, the version label for V1. I'm going to call any pod that's got that version label that's, that's part of the V1 subset and any pod that's got the version two label is part of my V2 subset. So I'm just defining the the potential groupings of traffic in there. And then the virtual service, I'm saying where I actually want this stuff to go. So what I'm saying is anything that comes in from the from the uh, from the, the the gateway that's receiving the external traffic, if it's looking for the product page component, 70% of traffic is going to go to subset V1 and 30% to subset V2. So so my virtual service is is really controlling the 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 traffic management of where this stuff's going to go. And these weightings here are what's going to give me my canary deployment. And then as I'm kind of rolling through, yeah, for, for it, in reality, this, this might be 5% for the very first deployment. And then over a period of whatever I'm, whatever my rollout is going to be, um, days or hours or months, then I'm gradually going to increase that weight and decrease the weight from version 2. OK, so let's go and uh, do that. So where are my canary deployment? And uh, let's go and do this. I'm just checking what these other bits and pieces are. <laughs> uh, OK, so I'm going to deploy the whole thing. So let's do that. So we can apply. Dash F. 
canary deployment. So I can apply all those things that are in that canary deployment folder. So I've got my, uh, I've got my subset def defined, uh, I've got my destination rule, and I've got my virtual service. I've split those out into, to make them easier to find, actually. That's all I've done there. Okay, cool. So uh, I've got these things created now. So if I go and look at uh, my virtual service, You should learn to type quicker and make my life a lot easier. So I've got my virtual service up and running. Uh, I'd be able to see my destination rules and everything if I wanted to. Okay, so if I do a kubectl get pods, oh, dear idea, get pods. Uh, so I've got my V1 product page and my V2 product page, and, and they're in they're in part of the they're they're both under the same Kubernetes service, but I'm not sending traffic via the Kubernetes service. I'm sending traffic via the Istio virtual service, which is going to do that canary deployment piece. So now when I refresh this several times, 70% of traffic is going to come from version one, and then now this is version two. So this is my um, uh, tastefully updated uh, Comic Sans version. If I'm, I'm keeping F5 here. Most of my traffic is going to come through to my version one, but then 30% will come through to version two. Uh, if I keep hitting it enough, then I'll see that coming through. So that's how you kind of do that canary deployment. And, if I, and, and all I do if I want to increase the weight is I, is I literally go into my, uh, into my virtual service and I change the weights to make them 50-50 or 60-40 or whatever I want to do to do my deployment. Um, this obviously is not what you would really do because if I'm uh, if I'm an end user, like it's kind of a weird experience because sometimes I'll see version one, sometimes I'll see version two. But Istio can take care of that as well because you can have your uh, as part of your destination rules and your virtual service for configuring the traffic. You can um, look at cookies in there. So actually, that in a more extensive version of this demo, my version two uh, component drops a cookie onto the browser to say, you know, this is this person is using the Canary deployment. And then I've got an additional rule in my Istio deployment that says, um, if you have that cookie, I'm going to send you to version two. And if you don't have that cookie, then I'm going to apply the 70-30 rule. So you can layer this stuff up to, to, to get your Canary deployment, but also have a decent user experience because, you know, I don't want to get a random version every time I go to the application. Um, I, can, I can do that with the, with the cookie. So Istio can, can int it understands the traffic that's coming in. So it understands HTTP and gRPC traffic. It can look inside the payload and it can, it can make decisions based on that. So that's all pretty cool. Okay, so that's traffic management. You can do blue-green deployments with the same policy, with the same idea. Uh, you can do your canary deployments inside those components that I looked at very briefly. The virtual service and the destination rule. That's where you can include things like um, like automatic retries. So if there's a, if there's a network issue, uh, Istio will retry the, the the request for you. So your application doesn't need to worry about that stuff. Uh, you can do um, outlier detection. So if there's if there's one if one particular pod is is consistently failing, then um, it can take that out and like implement a circuit breaker for you. So you have your circuit breaker to let no more traffic goes to that badly behaving pod, which hopefully give it a chance to recover and then traffic will start flowing again. So all that stuff lives in here. So you can, you can do like a whole, a whole bunch of stuff in here. Um, but I wanna show you just a, a couple of demos from all the major things that you can do with this video. So the next thing is, is about securing traffic. So let's go back to my, uh, my tiny slide deck here. And Elton, we did have one question. Yeah, go for it. Your session at last year's DockerCon, uh, you spoke about different service meshes. And at the time, um, I guess a question in the session was, is there one that is starting to be the leader? Ah, yeah, Istio is, is, is almost definitely the leader at the moment. So they, they, there, are, there are several, and more are coming actually. So there's, there's uh, uh, Linkerd is the, is the main alternative, and it actually, it actually predates Istio. Uh, it doesn't have all the features of Istio, but um, the, the way Istio is, Istio is built up from, from other, uh, other open source components. So the actual networking component is a, is a separate thing that Istio brings in. Whereas Linkerd, everything is written from scratch. And actually Linkerd, um, typically has better baseline performance. So in the pure, uh, how, much, how much latency does my service mesh add to my networking calls, uh, Linkerd is better for that. Um, it doesn't have everything that Istio does, but uh, you know, performance is, is a, a bit better in there. Um, Istio has got the biggest feature set, there's also this thing called the service mesh interface SMI, uh, which is which is an attempt to to abstract away the the implementation of a service mesh. So I can define the things that I care about, uh, and I throw that to my cluster, and it, it may be using Istio, it may be using Mesh, it may be using Linkerd or whatever. So um, you know, there's a, 
an attempt to, to, to isolate that away so you, you don't really care too much about the implementation. It'll be interesting to see where that goes, but at the moment, like Istio is, is the clear favorite. There's, there's uh, my fellow Docker Cat thing, uh, Lee, Lee Calco. He's, um, he wrote the book uh, uh, Up and Running with Istio, and he also runs a project called Meshery, which is M. Um, uh, I've got a computer here, so I can show you that, can I? Uh, it's a meshery.io. And what that does um, is it, it kind of, uh, it, it's an Uber service mesh. So it knows all about the other service meshes and it can it can deploy them for you into your cluster. So you can very quickly go, go you know, via mesh, meshery. If, you, if I want to compare and contrast them, I want to see what LinkedIn can do for me. I want to see what a console can do, console connect. Then meshery will, will deploy it. It can it can do um, benchmarks for you. So that's a really good thing if you're if you're looking at this stuff. Um, but at the moment, yeah, people are using Istio most because uh, it has the biggest feature set. Uh, it was originally a Google project. Um, it's not part of the CNCF, so it, it's not part of a uh, it's not part of a separate um, uh, management uh, uh, foundation if that's important to you. Uh, whereas LinkedIn is, but um, yeah, it's the one that, that that has the most momentum at the moment. Cool. Okay, so. That's good. I'm glad we had a question because, like, like, when you're doing these things, you always wonder if, uh, if your maybe your microphone stopped half an hour ago and, and nobody can hear. You. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to here. So, so traffic management is the first thing these, that the service mesh can do because obviously it manages all all the network communication, so you can send things in different in different ways, and that unleashes all sorts of interesting patterns. The second thing it does is uh, is uh, security. So, uh, again, because if you own both sides of the conversation, you can take all that kind of nasty low level uh, security stuff out of your application and and stop worrying about it. So, if you you know if you if you have a, a requirement or a desire to do to do encryption in transit for everything. Then it kind of gets difficult. It, it means you're you're running. Um, it's that you have, you need application code and you need application configuration and you need like certificate management policies because in my development environment I'm going to be using self-signed certificates. So you know that adds just a whole bunch of unnecessary problems for developers to work through. Uh, in my in my production environments I'm going to have some sort of certificate authority. I'm going to burn my nose. Excuse me <clears throat> to manage all that. There you are. You don't get that. Um, at a paid conference, uh, so the um, uh, but the and you just all these this is an infrastructure level concern. You know, encrypting the, the network communication is something that can happen at the network level without the application needing to worry about it, and uh, and your service mesh will do that too. So this example here again, I'm, uh, Istio layers on these extra um, these extra resources, these extra uh, 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 types of components. So I've got my container running my application that's in my pod alongside it is my is my network proxy. I can define an authentication policy and an authorization policy within um, within Istio that says uh, I want all communication between these things to be encrypted. Istio will generate um, uh, certificates for me. And it will manage the certificates as well. So, so one of the components of, it, of Istio, it, it, it generates the certificates, it rotates them, it creates them with a short lifespan. So even if they get, you know, even if they get uh, uh, obtained by someone, they can't use them for very long. Uh, it does all that stuff for you. We, and that's that, that's kind of the difficult stuff. And because I've got these certificates, I can also do authorization. So I can say that my review service can only be called by the product page service. So my product page um, component, when it's just making a straight HTTP call. I got my here. Oh yeah, here we go. So uh, my my product page component uh, on the left here is making a straight HTTP call in the application code, and my reviews component on the right here is just listening on port 80 because it's a standard HTTP REST API. When I register these things with my with my destination rule here that's saying I'm using uh, mutual TLS, and inside my my virtual service I'm saying I need uh, a TLS certificate, otherwise I won't re reply to anything. What happens there is now that the pod for my service uh, it gets upgraded to HTTPS, so it's listening on port 443 now. Uh, I've got a, a certificate for the service that gets managed for me by Istio, but I also have a certificate for the client. So on the pod side there, when it's making the HTTP call from within the application, that goes through the proxy. The proxy upgrades that to HTTPS and it provides the client certificate. So now that communication is fully encrypted and uh, authenticated. So um, uh, the, the client certificate has got the identity of the caller, which comes from the Kubernetes service account. So I can write an authorization rule that says uh, this this principle here is uh, my my the, the calling service only the product page can access this, which is really nice if you want to uh, have kind of uh, networking policies that say 
only certain things are allowed in, only certain things are allowed out. Um, Kubernetes has this network policy framework, but it kind of relies on your network, um, your your network plugin that you're using. Whereas you can you can elevate that up to the level here and, and do all this to you. And it's um it's kind of the, I wouldn't say it was simple, but it's the same it's the same process that you're doing for your your um your traffic management. Okay, so my authorization here. So I'll show you how this stuff looks. So uh, this is the simplest one. So this is um, uh, this is my authentication policy that is basically saying uh, for any communication between peers. So any any two components that are managed by Istio, we're going to use mutual TLS, and that's going to be a required mutual TLS. So basically, if uh, if something that isn't part of Istio tries to call into my service, it will fail because it's not presenting a client certificate. So it's not going to be able to go and consume my application. Uh, you can you can have optional TLS if you're you know partway through migrating uh, all the services onto onto the service mesh. But for you know an entirely Istio managed application, I'm going to say mutual TLS is required all the way through. My destination rule here, so same same object that same type of object that I was using uh, for my for my canary deployment to 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 define my subset. Here I'm just saying that um, this is this is the client saying I'm using I'm using TLS and it's the Istio TLS, which means Istio is going to provide the certificates for me. So all I'm saying is uh, my service is expecting mutual TLS, and I'm telling my client now to to present uh, its its certificates. So this is the client side of that. So anything that's within within my my cluster communication. And then the authorization policy, which is the the, the more interesting thing here, is saying that uh, anything that comes into reviews. All these rules are going to apply, and the default is uh, deny all. So unless there's an explicit rule to allow it, it's going to be denied for everything. This is saying that my source principle is my book info product page, and again, Istio takes Istio takes the identity from the platform. So with Kubernetes, it uses your Kubernetes service account. We're saying if the if the principle is my book info product page, then it is allowed to make a get call, and it's not it's as simple as that. And obviously, you would extend this or, or restrict it as however you wanted to. Okay, so let's go and show you this. So if I apply this to, okay, cool. So those are all Istio Istio managed things. They're all you know they're all custom resources that can be managed for me by Istio. And all that should happen really is that the app should just carry on still working. So the only thing that is calling my book reviews component is the product page. So you know that's all good. So that's all working correctly. I haven't broken anything, which you can do because if you if you define your services as requiring TLS, but you don't do your um, destination rule to say that the client will do TLS, then it just won't it just won't work because um, it's not providing the certificate. But we can prove that it is working by going and looking at uh, our containers. So let's go back here. I'll zoom this up a little bit. So all these things are just running in Docker, obviously. So I've just got my Docker containers that are, that are running. Uh, there's a whole, a whole bunch of stuff, obviously, for my from Istio and all the other bits of the components that I'm running. Somewhere in here, I will have a container. Uh, let's have a look at this. Let's copy back through. I have a container for my uh, my details component. So the details component uh, isn't allowed to talk to the reviews component. There isn't the, the details component uses its own service account. So uh, it will go through it will go through Istio. If I try and talk to the reviews component from from within inside here, um, it's it's an Istio managed component. It will have its own identity. It will have its own certificate, which it will present. But the certificate will be for a different service account that's not permitted by the authorization rules. So if I um, if I try and 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 call the reviews component. I'm not going to be able to. So let me grab this uh, this here. So all I'm doing is I'm going to connect to that container, uh, so I can I can run some commands. So I'm inside here now, and if I try and curl my reviews component, I'm going to get an RBAC access denied, which is just telling me that um, th there is an authorization policy in place, and you're not on the list, so you, you can't go in and call this stuff. So even though I'm inside the container. And my communication is going through the proxy. It's complete. I, I don't know that. It's completely transparent to me. When I make my curl call, um, that's going to go through my my proxy stack. It's going to apply all the rules. What it actually does is it goes and and, and says the um, to to uh, the the mixer component, which applies the policy, and says, "Am I allowed to go and talk to this?" And it comes back and it says no. So the the communication doesn't even get to my service. It's blocked by Istio. So um, there are there are other interesting things you can do. You can poke around here and have a look at the certificates and see how they get built and all that sort of stuff you can try and uh, and find a way around it but you, you're not gonna be able to do anything because you, you need to have the certificate and the authorization policy is going to limit your access to a particular identity 
Okay, so let's go. Oh, this is if you live in the Windows world, um, you you always type CLS in in Linux. It's clear, and so you end up getting things wrong all the time. Okay, so the last thing we cover, uh, just as, as another quick demo, is uh, about observability. So my um. The, the bit of, of Istio that is doing the policy application, uh, that's, that's Mixer, that's the thing that can get quite expensive because you imagine that um, even though Istio caches everything as much as it can, it pushes out updates to all the containers, so not everything is necessarily going to involve a call back to, to an Istio component to check policy because it, you know, it, it may have those rules in its cache. Um, ultimately, you can do a lot of stuff in Mixer, so Mixer is actually going to be affecting your network calls. Um, it's, it's the thing that applies the policy to say, well, whether you're allowed, and it's the thing that can also collect telemetry. So what, what happens is all of the all of the Istio services, all of the proxies send these telemetry reports to Mixer and it can push them back out to, to different backends. So um, as part of the, the, the demo app deployment of Istio, you get uh, you get Prometheus and Grafana, uh, you get a service that a mesh dashboard, um, you get distributed tracing uh, with 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 um, Jaeger, and you get you can set up um, Elasticsearch and FluentD and Kibana to get logs of, of every single network call that happens. So you can get observability at all these different levels, uh, and all from the same the same um, the same process. So all these these telemetry reports come into Mixer, and however you configure Mixer, um, that says where the data goes. So it it'll do a transform and send the data off. I, it doesn't actually because you know Prometheus is it pulls the data, but broadly this is what happens, um, and that's why this can get expensive because you, you, Mixer could be doing a lot of stuff for your network calls. So that's why this is the component that you need to be careful about how you configure it because this is what's going to soak up all your compute power. Okay, but you can do some really cool stuff with it. So let's go and look at this. So inside here. Uh, I've got a component running called Kiali. Kiali is a service mesh uh, dashboard. It's really really cool, um, and it just shows you it shows you all the bits of your application and the network and the and the flow of, of traffic between them. So it's really cool. It's already running because it's part of my demo deployment. Um, Istio has this really nice way of of giving you temporary access to dashboards. So if you have the Istio tuttle command, um, you can connect it to your your Kubernetes cluster that's running up in you know in Azure or wherever, and you can um, you can temporarily view the dashboard. So you, you, just like you would with Kubernetes, you can do a port forward. Um, Istio lets you do that, but you say you know Istio tuttle uh, run Kiali, and then it'll forward everything for you. So you don't have to have it permanently uh, exposed. But for you know, demo purposes, I'm going to create um, a gateway that's going to send traffic uh, into Kiali on this random port that they've chosen, uh, and this is the setup to send the traffic in. So when I deploy this, I'm going to be able to get to my, my service mesh uh, dashboard. So let's go and do this. Okay, cool. So now I should be able to browse to Kiali. Kiali is, is, a, is an offshoot of the, of the Istio um, of the Istio project. So if I send a whole bunch more traffic in through my uh, my application, some of it's going to version two, some of it's going to version one, all those authorization policies are going through, then in Kiali here, and the username is admin and the password is admin, obviously, although actually that's that's stored in a Kubernetes secret, so you can change that. So what I get here is um, by namespace. So it knows about all the all the namespaces in my Istio system. Uh, my default namespace is, <coughs> is where my application is running. So let's go and pick my default namespace and it's going to load my graph and it shows me my product page. Uh, it knows there's V1 and V2 in there. It shows me the details page. There's only one version of each of those. Uh, I can put some labels on the edge there to say where the percentage of requests are going. Um, and because, because my product page is where I've got my Canary deployment, I can see that um, 100% of traffic comes in from the from the Istio gateway, which is the listening for external component external traffic. 70% of it, 69.6 uh, goes to version one, and 30.4 goes to version two. So it's it's a pretty good approximation of what I asked for. The more traffic you put through it, um, the more uh, accurate it will be in terms of in terms of shifting the weight. Um, and then I've I've only got these you know these components running here. So. I can see all this stuff. Uh, it also tells me uh, my, how long things are taking, uh, and I can even go down if I go and look at my Istio config. Uh, you can, and you like, you really shouldn't do this. So you can go and see how things are set up, uh, how they're configured. There's my 7030. Uh, I can go and look at the YAML, and I can edit it and, and save it. So you, <laughs> if you're actually looking at running Istio, then there's a flag to say make Kiali read only, which you obviously want to do because you don't want people um, hacking around the YAML inside Kiali and just 
deploying stuff into your cluster. So, you know, you don't want to be doing this, but it's kind of nice to, to be able to see what you've got here. And it shows you all the bits and pieces, all the health that's in there. Um, and then you can, you know, you can kind of drill down at different levels. So as well as Kiali, you've got Grafana that shows you the, the, the next level of metrics. All the, all the Kiali stuff is coming from Prometheus. So the data comes into Prometheus and Kiali and Grafana just surface it in different ways. So you, there, there are different ways of seeing this stuff. Um, and then of course you've got, you've got uh, the, distributed, uh, the distributed tracing, which is, which is really super useful uh, because it, it, especially with a, even with a small service graph like this, if my, if my product page is taking a long time to return, I don't know where the latency is. Like, it could be the, the page itself, it could be any one of my services. The distributed tracing shows you all that stuff uh, and it shows you exactly where all the time's going. So that's, that's a really, that's a really cool thing. Okay, so. All right, and we do have some questions. I don't know if that's going to jump in. Yeah. All right, is Istio required for Canary deployments? Uh, no, no. So you can you can do canary deployments in, in other ways. Um, Istio just makes it super easy for you. So so uh, when people are looking at, at the service mesh ideas and when they're looking at um, maybe you know the, the the cost of taking it into their architecture, uh, if you only want to do one of the things that it does, then you, you maybe don't need a service mesh. So you know if you need uh, encryption in transit and you need uh, to be able to authenticate. At, service level and you need canary deployments then it makes a lot of sense to, to take this stuff on board if you just need canary deployments there are other ways of doing that so you know there are there are tools like uh like uh, flagger which is a really nice one from weaveworks which is which is, takes a slightly different approach to doing this stuff but it lets you do these kind of stage deployments um you can kind of you can you, you can kind of do it just with the Kubernetes primitives. So you can send traffic to different places with Kubernetes, but you don't get the fine level of control. So um, if I wanted to do a really basic Canary deployment, I'd have my Kubernetes service, I'd have 10 pods of my V1 application and one pod of my V2 application. And in Kubernetes will load balance between them. So, so technically I am getting a Canary deployment, but I don't get the fine level of control about um, you know, where the traffic goes. I, I, don't, I don't get this sort of thing that shows me you know, how, how it's all actually, how it's been spread around there. So no, you don't need it for that. Um, and if you only need one feature of a service mesh, then, then maybe look at other ways of doing that because it's quite a lot to take on board if you're not gonna, uh, if you're not gonna use the full feature set. I'm done for demos, by the way, Jenny. So if you want to, if you want to uh, uh, carry on with more questions, that's cool. Okay. We have um, some questions about console for con console connect. Is Steo better when compared to Linkerd, Envoy? Um, so maybe a run through of some of the other. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So so. Um, they they all have a different feature set. So the, I mean the first thing is if you're comparing so so I would I would I would say Linkerd and Istio are the ones to, to to shortlist to start with if you if you're thinking about this stuff. Um, Console Connect is really interesting because it it, it doesn't require a, a container platform. Now obviously you should be moving everything to Docker because that's the way the world's going uh, and you're gonna get left behind if you don't. But if you still got virtual machines, the way Console works is it deploys an agent on each machine. And you can actually have, uh, it, it has some, some mesh capabilities of its own. So you can do some of these features direct machine to machine uh, communication. Uh, but Istio can also use console connect as its kind of, as its uh, deployment mechanism. So you can get the f some of the features of Istio with combined with console. Um, I think if you're, if you're really interested in, if you, if you know you want to adopt this or if you're, you're investigating it as part of a POC or whatever, then I would definitely look at, look at meshery because, um, it makes it it makes it super easy to, to deploy in your cluster. So you know you don't need to go and do half a day's research about setting up Istio and, and seeing how to apply the features. So you know it'll do it for you. Um, and you, you just you just choose which which service mesh you want to run, and it, it will benchmark them for you. So um, if you're if you're worried about performance, if you're not sure about how to get started with these things, and the other thing that is uh, that is really good is uh, let me go and find uh, get this up here uh, is Solo. Uh, is this the right one? Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, they have this thing called Glue, uh, which is which is uh, again a kind of a service mesh abstraction. So you can um, you can run uh, uh, you can run your your service mesh um, with with a different implementation, but but work at a, at a, at a higher level. So you could potentially kind of you know swap them out underneath. So. Uh, I would have a look at, at Meshery, have a look at what, what Solo are doing with Glue, um, and then kind of kind of shortlist that down. But, but ultimately, it's going to come down to the features that you want. Because if you want, uh, excuse me, I'm having a cold. Uh, if you want uh, like 
to be able to get the, the dashboard and if you want to be able to do um, uh, mutual TLS and, and author, uh, authorization, then, and, then not everything supports that. So uh, think about what you're trying to achieve and then, and then look at the feature sets and, and narrow down from there. How are we doing on questions? All right, how do you destroy and recreate the whole application with Istio? Uh, your application, you want to destroy and recreate your application? Um, well, <laughs> Istio is, is just uh, is just applying networking rules. So uh, if if nothing is is actually there, then that nothing will happen. Uh, not not explaining this clearly. What I mean is, if you want to take down your entire application, you can you can remove all your deployments, remove all your pods, uh, and the Istio stuff will just stay there. So you know, if you wanted, and, and then you do a new deployment of your application, you deploy it in the same way, and the Istio bits are already there. If you wanted to get rid of Istio or your Istio components, then you're gonna you know you're gonna go through your um, your YAML files. And, and just you know undeploy them as it were. So when you when you go through and and, and remove those things, you can remove the virtual service and everything as well. Um, that's the, the simple way to do it. The, the other thing is that you don't have to. Uh, not every application that you that you deploy has to be part of the service mesh. So when I did that very first deployment that had my where is it now uh, in my namespace that said automatically register things with the service mesh. If you don't want to do that, then what you do instead is you use this Istio tuttle command line and you give it your application YAML file. And it injects the the proxy configuration into your pod definition. So if you want to have fine grained control, you want to see exactly what's happening, and the ability to potentially reverse that um, by by altering the config, then I can have my my YAML file with my description, of my application, and then I can do my Istio version that I get from the command line, uh, and then I can choose which one I want to deploy. So yeah, you you've got options there. But but I mean, the thing to remember is these are just Kubernetes objects. So you know you don't you don't need to manage them in in any different way from the way you you ordinarily manage stuff. All right, next question. Is certificate management capability useful for communications with external systems, i.e. the systems outside your Kubernetes cluster? So yeah, you can do that. So so the, uh, the Istio creating and managing certificates for you is, is really good um, uh, for, for within the cluster. Uh, you can also, you can give it a, um, you can give it the, the the certificates that you want to use as well. So you can you can manually configure that stuff. So it's going to generate a whole bunch of certs for you. Um, that it, it just uses like OpenSSL and under the hood. So it just uses kind of standard open source projects. Um, but they're not going to be you know you not you can't go and get a copy of that and give it to some external service. So if you've got your own certificate um, authority, then you can configure Istio to use your certificate authority, and then then everything should kind of flow together. So um, there, there's that side. Uh, and then if in terms of incoming communication, if you want to do kind of let's encrypt type stuff, um, there are ways to set that up too with your with your ingress gateway. So as part of your ingress configuration, you can say incoming traffic. Here's my my real cert, my my TLS cert for sixside.com, um, and we're going to use that for external communication that's coming in, and then within the cluster, we're going to use our own our own certificates that are managed for us, or maybe you know we can apply our own certificate authority and and have a, a known name generating those certs. Awesome, thank you, Elton. Where can everyone? Um, where should they look for more information about you and uh, <laughs> learning from you? Okay, cool. So uh, yeah, great, great question. So Twitter is probably the best thing. So I'm on Twitter as uh, oh, let me look how to Twitter, haven't we? Twitter uh, dot com slash Elton Stoneman. So that's just uh, my name. I'm usually tweeting about stuff like most of the time. Uh, from there, you'll 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 find uh, various adverts <laughs> for books and floors like courses and stuff. Uh, and then my blog here is um, not as up to date as it should be, but there's there's a whole bunch of stuff here. My my background is in uh, before before. Before I got into the container world uh, four or five years ago, my background is all .NET and Windows. So a lot of this stuff is how to get older applications into this kind of modern world. And a lot of this stuff is about Kubernetes and Windows and stuff like that. But um, uh, my new book that's coming out is uh, all cross-platform. So that's the, the Learn Docker and a month of lunches. So yeah, blog and, and Twitter. Um, and that's kind of that's where you're going to find me, really. Oh, I should tell you the link for uh, for this thing as well, shouldn't I? So the, the demos that I've done today, if you go to the Docker blog, uh, then you will see 
this is the blog post. I've, I've, this is what I've been using to kind of go through stuff today. And up here, you'll see all the links to uh, to the things that I've talked about. So there's there's Lee's book, um, my latest broadside course, which is all about Istio, uh, and that's where that's where the demos are from today. So you can find all that stuff on the the Docker blog. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for joining. We will see you next month. Uh, and like I said, this will be posted on Docker's YouTube and um, we will be sharing it on Twitter. Uh, and otherwise, if you signed up with an email, you will get an email as well with the links. All right. Have a great day and evening. Thanks, Jenny. Bye. Bye.